GPS tracking and RFID chips mandatory for all registered firearms. Recently, Attorney General Eric Holder suggested that there be some kind of mandatory bracelet that gun owners wear, that only the registered gun owner would have access to that gun because he was uh, wearing a bracelet. What are your thoughts on that? I mean, I think that's that's good. I mean, especially if they're carrying it around um, and they have the bracelet on, then I guess people will be a little more comfortable um, knowing that this person has gone through the process in order to um, get the gun and it's extremely legal and things like that. That's genius. Whoever came up with that, that that's good. I like that. One thing that I think is clear with young people and with adults as well is that we just have to be repetitive about this. It's not enough to simply have a, a catchy ad on a Monday and then only do it every Monday. We need to do this every day of the week and just really brainwash people into thinking about guns in a vastly different way. That sounds like a good idea. It would stop a lot of the violence, obviously, I guess. I like that idea a lot because I think that it would give people a lot more accountability to say, like, if you want to carry a concealed weapon, you need to be able to own that and have people know that you're carrying it um, by uh, by showing them that you're carrying one. That's absolutely ridiculous and infringes your rights in ways that, and I mean, who decided that safety was more important than my personal liberty and ability to defend my own safety rather than entrusted in them, where they're all the way in Washington making these policies that directly infect, affect my lives in ways that they can't even know. If they're law-abiding citizens, you put it like a tracking bracelet on them. Or something. No, 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 no. More guns, less guns, what do you think? Old school ways, that's what's gonna make the streets better. What's old school? Back in the 1980s. <laughs> That's old school. Like an old-fashioned ass whooping? Yes, an old-fashioned ass whooping. All right, I'm, I'm with you there. I believe once we allow the government to start to track these individuals, it is abridging our, you know, implied rights to privacy that we may have in our Constitution. However, I think there should be some sort of registration on every gun owner gun owner. Guns are for recreational purposes and you know more than one person is going to be wanting to use it so. Uh, now okay you said it's a key thing right there you said it's for recreational purposes what about and also for your safety and, and for uh, you know in case somebody breaks into your house uh, what about against a tyrannical government? Um, it's in the Constitution. It is in the Constitution but you know I was written you know, 250 years ago. Uh, you see you think it's a little outdated? I'd say it's a little outdated. Vice President Biden and I had um, a meeting with a group of technology people and talked about how um, guns can be made more safe by making them either through fingerprint identification, um, the gun talks to a, a bracelet or something that you might wear, um, how guns can be used only by the person who is uh, lawfully in um, possession of, of the weapon. So do you think Obama appointed the right man for the job as far as Attorney General? I think so. It sounds like he's doing, that's a good suggestion. He's at least thinking critically about the situation and trying to come up with other ideas to protect people's safety. Isn't he the Fast and Furious guy? That's the very same one. Isn't he the guy who, who did the, uh, the pardon at the end of Bill Clinton's uh, time on that guy that uh, basically bought his own way out of criminality? So it doesn't really surprise you that it's it's his brain behind all this? Not, not one bit. That's genius. Whoever came up with that, that... Good. I like that. Alex Jones here to tell you about how you can help spread liberty worldwide while also enjoying what I have found to be the best tasting 100% organic coffee on the planet. For more than a decade, my favorite coffee has come from the high mountains of southern Mexico, where the Chiapas farmers grow their unique shade-grown Arabica beans. We have now managed to secure the sought-after beans in a highly customized blend. Discover and try a bag of the Patriot Blend 100% organic coffee at InfoWarsLife.com. This coffee gives 
gives you a long, smooth pick-me-up for hours without the headaches and heartburn that so many other coffees give me personally. Hands down, this is my favorite coffee. And it's taken us years to secure connections directly to the Chiapas Mexican farmers. Drop by the site today, order a bag or two, and I don't think you're going to be disappointed. Available in original or with our immune support infusion blend, you will be supporting a free press, all the while enjoying a truly great-tasting cup of my favorite coffee. Available at InfoWarsLife.com. The globalist social engineers are not just targeting us with propaganda. They are manipulating our genetics. We are being targeted at every level by estrogen mimickers that lower our testosterone and other hormones and natural compounds that the body needs. The key is to be aware of this attack and to fight back against it. After consulting top doctors, nutritionists, pharmacists, and others, we have developed what I believe is the ultimate non-GMO organic super male vitality formula sourced from powerful organic herbs harvested around the planet and then concentrated for maximum potency. I've always believed in nutrition and herbs. Super Male Vitality was developed to activate your body's own natural processes instead of using synthetic chemicals. Super Male Vitality by InfoWars Life is so powerful that I only take half the recommended dose. Visit InfoWarsLife.com today to secure your Super Male Vitality and other powerful products from InfoWars Life. Are you concerned about unavoidable air toxins like mold, smog, or chemtrail residue? Well, David Knight sits down with Dr. Group to discuss some warning signs that you should be looking for in your own environment. Well, Dr. Group, welcome. It's nice to talk to you. You know, you. we were talking just before the interview about the rapid increase in lung disease and one of the things you had here about asthma rates doubling and we were talking about my father I watched my entire life my father having severe asthma attacks nearly dying and then I had a cousin who in middle age did die from an asthma attack because she couldn't get to her inhaler but you were pointing out that it, that doesn't really address the root issue what is the root issue why are we seeing so much toxic air well, the, re the root issue is that we live in contaminated houses now. We work in contaminated office buildings. We have the geoengineering situation that's going on, the bioengineering situation that's going on. So the really what makes matters worse is our oxygen concentration on the planet is severely being depleted. We've gone from 28% oxygen even 50 years ago down to about 9 even 6% oxygen levels in some places. Mm. A lot of that has to do with with uh, since the World War II when the government started experimenting with geoengineering or weather modification, you know, that has continued and there's been hundreds and hundreds and thousands of tons of different chemicals that have been sprayed into the sky, including aluminum, barium, strontium, and not, you know, that goes and gets into your air conditioning system in your house. I mean, mm -hmm. it sucks the outside air in, and unless someone has an air purification system, you know, all that's going to be, they're going to be exposed to that. I mean, we have, it's such a huge problem because we have respiratory issues. Probably eight out of 10 people have some sort of chronic sinus, cough, respiratory issues. I mean, the lungs and the airways are being bombarded on a daily basis. Whether it's from the mold and mildew in your home, the pet dander in your home, the volatile organic compounds that you're breathing, which could be formaldehyde, uh, any of the chemicals from the paint, the carpeting, the couches in your house, the Sick flooring. buildings. I mean, they try to make it more energy efficient, and so they, one of the ways they try to do that is to make it really, really tight is one exactly. of the strategies that they were doing. Mm -hmm. So you get these sick buildings where it keeps everything inside, all the toxic gases being released from your furniture, your paints or whatever, as well as not getting any fresh air inside. Yeah, that's exactly what's happening. I mean, people aren't putting plants in their house to suck up the carbon dioxide. They're using toxic chemicals for cleaning products. They use toxic uh, cosmetic ingredients. I mean, houses are literally a slew of toxic gases and chemicals that people are breathing at all times. So, I mean, it's a very serious situation that needs to be addressed on what's causing all of these allergies, all of this asthma, all these respiratory issues, and then how can people address those mm -hmm. and how, what, what people can do to rectify those on a regular basis. You know, one of the main things that I like to talk about is, you know, 
you look up in the sky these days and you just see these crisscross lines or these chemtrails everywhere and it's still a controversial issue you know what what are they spraying in the skies it's gotten to the point now where we have 200 species every single day going extinct. Most people don't mm. even know that. The extinction rate of, of living organisms has gone up a hundred thousand times since they started geoengineering. It's something wow. that you're not going to see in the media. You know, Alex and, and InfoWars have been reporting on it for a long time. But it's to the point now where it's getting so severe that it's not only geoengineering. I mean, they're not only spraying aluminum nanoparticles in the air, but they're also spraying toxic biological agents as well as radioactive substances in the air right now because they can blame that on Fukushima mm -hmm. later on. So mm -hmm. there's definitely aerial warfare that's going on, and it's damaging the body. And the sad thing is, is... These chemicals, especially aluminum and nanoparticles, when you breathe in an a aerosol type of aluminum into your nose, it, those aluminum particles actually travel along the olfactory nerve. And guess where the aluminum is deposited? It's deposited in the emotional part of the brain and then also in the memory part of the brain. That's mm. why you're seeing an increase Alzheimer's. in Alzheimer's, yeah. dementia, mm -hmm. stuff like that. But guess what? You know, a child's brain is even more sensitive. And now you're seeing the emotional part of the brain being contaminated with aluminum, which can be directly linked to depression, aggressive behavior, autism signs and symptoms, lack of memory uh, also. But... It's another way that you can get kids on psychotropic drugs. Sure, yeah. You know? Problem solution. Problem solution. Yeah, let's exactly. create it. Let's damage. Let's do the weather control. You know, it, to the point where, I mean, even in the 60s, they could, they could create a hurricane or they could divert a hurricane. I mean, the weather control is so good now with the harp systems and with the weather modification and the, cloud, and the seed clouding, you know, seeding the clouds to determine what they want to do with the weather. They can create a drought over here or they can yeah. create, you know, more food over here. I mean, it's it's a whole system, but what it's doing is it's destroying the whole earth because now you have the so-called global warming, but when you seed the clouds, it actually creates more warming down below. Mm -hmm. And uh, and not only that, but what we're do what's happening is we're accumulating more aluminum and more toxic substances into the soil. And plants, especially trees, as a natural mechanism for protection, if there's high levels of aluminum in the soil, the trees will not take up the nutrients that they need to survive, and they go into a protection mode, and they actually will kill themselves by protecting their own DNA. They don't want their DNA damaged, so they would rather die, and that's what's happening in forests all across the world right now wow. is trees and animals and organisms and plants are going, literally going extinct at 200 species a day. That's incredible. The canaries in a coal mine. Now, there's not just that, though. There's things that we do to ourselves. We're talking about the sick building. Talk about cigarettes. Talk about all the, chem uh, the chemicals in cigarettes. I was just telling you before we started talking how I'd just seen that the movie from 1998, The Insider, which was a really compelling film, had journal journalistic issues as to whether or not they were going to actually publish the information that they got, even though they were being threatened. But what he was talking about was the hazardous chemicals. The whistleblower was pointing out the hazardous chemicals that the tobacco industry was putting in in order to intensify the nicotine effect. That's right. I mean, and that's been going on for a long time. I mean, the, <clears throat> you know, years ago, they, were, they had ads that came out everywhere saying cigarettes were healthy for you and they were good for you and it showed doctors smoking and stuff like that. Over the years, they've put up to 4,000 chemicals and sprayed 4,000 chemicals or added the chemicals to the actual tobacco. Tobacco itself is a natural herb, and if you do the research, which I was commissioned years ago to do research to determine whether or not tobacco or smoking is very harmful to the body, um, what we found in our research was if you trace back to the Egyptian times, 3,000, 4,000 years ago, tobacco was always used as a natural herb. It was either ground up or it was smoked in pipes of the Indians and everything else. There was no evidence of any type of cancer, any type of negative effects of the tobacco, using tobacco as a natural herb. Just like 
using the cocoa plant, you know. What happened was all the diseases and the lung diseases and all the problems started after these companies were spraying the pesticides, the insecticides on the plants, and then yes. adding all the chemicals to the tobacco. Yes. Now, I'm not saying smoking is healthy or anything, but what I'm saying is it's not the actual tobacco plant, it's the chemicals that they're putting and the additives that they're putting in there that's causing disease. That's right, it's what we're seeing throughout the food supply, through yes. the adulteration of the modern chemicals and agriculture.